we're going to return to immunotherapy now, and we're going to focus on what happens early in the process. As, you, as you've heard, most immunotherapy trials are focused on advanced disease. What happens when a tumor initiates, and what's the role of the immune system here? Um, our next speaker is Dr. Sean DeMary, who was recently recruited to Mass General as an assistant professor of dermatology. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the uh, kind introduction, and uh, I would like also to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present our work. And as Dr. Haber mentioned, uh, I'm going to be discussing with you the role of the immune system in early carcinogenesis and cancer development. And um, as all of you know, and you heard from Miguel and Mark before my talk, uh, there has been a tremendous amount of progress in uh, therapies against cancer with advent of immunotherapeutics for cancer. But if you take a step back and look at what the focus has been in devising these new therapeutics, it has been these metastatic cancers and the role of immune cells that are already present in these tumors and we observe them as uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or TILs. These are mainly CD8 positive T cells, but we also um, see other T cell types in this environment. And that work and trying to potentiate these T cells in order to do their job, in other words, getting them to actually clear that tumor, has yielded the uh, therapeutics that we very much uh, familiar with this point. And these are checkpoint blockades, the really extensive work on tumor antigens and neoantigens, uh, vaccines and engineered T cells, these being the CAR T cells, uh, TCR transgenic T cells, and even more uh, basic ones like adaptive T cell transfers. But if we, again, uh, look at this and put that in perspective, we, we see that majority of the basic work on these have been done on cancers like melanoma or sarcoma where we don't see the precursor lesions. And it's been very, uh, a big black box of what, how does this immune response initiate against the tumor? And to address that, we have moved to cancers where you can see the precursor lesions and we really treat these precursor lesions like and we call them obviously carcinomas or cancers of the epithelium. And as shown here, you start with an initiating cancer cell, which over time forms a clone of mutated cells and then becomes an incitu carcinoma. Then at some rate, it develops into an invasive cancer and then metastasis. So the focus of our laboratory has been uh, to understand uh, the involvement of the immune system in early lesions. First and foremost, what is the in nat natural immunity process in engaging a tumor? And more importantly, if we can isolate those, if you will, factors or initiating events, can we potentiate them or deliver them to the cancer earlier, at the earlier time point so we can engage the anti-tumor immediately early in this process. And my laboratory has really focused on three topics in this area. One has to do with the innate immune cells, uh, namely myeloid cells and the natural killer cells, NK cells, and the role of these cells, for example, NK cells, and their really potent effect against virus to see if we can use that potency against a tumor that now we make it look like a virally infected cell. In the other topic, we are working on CD4 positive T cells, the idea being that these T cells in the context of adaptive immunity are the upstream activators of the immune response. So there should be some involvement of these cells more than what we really hear about in, in cancer immunology to initiate the response that then you see as a CD8, if you will, in the tumors. And thirdly, and also very important, is the other side of the coin, is the question of in many of these initiation and promotion events, you have immune cells still promoting the cancer. And namely, what we see in that context is chronic inflammation and the cancer associated with it. And we're trying to understand how that immune response differ from anti-tumor immunity that we really want to uh, promote. And I'm just going to, the rest of my talk, I'm going to give you an example of type of work we have done and how that translates to clinical care for patients. Um, and this work uh, is focused on the I can advance this. Has it focused on this cytokine, uh, thymic stromal lymphopoietin or TSLP. This is a IL-7 family. It belongs to IL-7 family of uh, cytokines. It's been known as a, as a master regulator of allergic inflammation, actually, in the skin and lung. And what we found uh, through preclinical studies, our experimental studies, is that when the keratinocytes in the skin are insulted, if you will, by mutations and things, they put up this cytokine as a danger signal that which activates the immune response against the, against the skin, if you, will, if you will, and then that leads to uh, engagement of actually CD4 positive T cells and blockage of cancer development as, at the very early stage of this, its development. This signaling pathway uh, seems to be and be demonstrated that it's directly impacting the CD4 T cells. We also went on to show that this 
uh, both suppresses already formed tumors and also block the skin from developing new tumors over time. Now, since this discovery, we took this idea of induction of this cytokine for treatment of, uh, if you will, skin cancers. And in this context, we really focused on precancerous lesions of the skin. These are called actinic keratosis, technical term, but what, what they are, they're a precursor to squamous cell carcinomas of the skin. We performed a randomized uh, double-blind clinical trial of 132 patients, looking at activation of this cytokine with topical treatment, a very short course of treatment for patients. And what we saw was uh, quite striking that uh, the patients who received this inducer of TSLP have very high rates of clearance of the lesions. And again, in pre-cancer world, you look for clearance of tumor, uh, not necessarily just shrinkage and all that, but total clearance and cure of the tumor on the skin. And we see a very, very clear difference between the induction and non-induction of, of the TSLP. Now, if you look at the patient's treated area, the nice thing about the skin studies is that you can actually demonstrate immune activation by the presence of inflammation at the site of these precancerous lesions. The precancerous lesions are harder to see. These are smaller in the versions of, if you will, in situ versions of a squamous cell carcinoma. But you can appreciate right after treatment, which was only four days, the amount of immune activation, which then leads to a nice clearance of the skin uh, from these lesions. And now if you go do some more of a, a experimental work on these, you can clearly demonstrate that in, in patients who receive the TSLP topical inducers uh, have, if you can appreciate the tumor is sitting right up here above the basement membrane in the, in the epidermal compartment. And you have aggregates of lymphocytes right at the border of epidermis uh, dermis junction. And you can, you can easily even appreciate the blistering of the, of, of the tumor off from the skin. And the majority of these cells that are sitting there are again CD4 positive T cells, very consistent with what we saw in our preclinical models. Uh, since these findings, we said, okay, can we take this whole observation and look at other tumors, uh, tumors of internal organs? And uh, one thing I want to mention is that not only keratinocytes put up this signal, but also other epithelial cells. In the context of early development of tumor, they do that. The prostate does it, breast cancer does it, and several others. But what we focused on was breast cancer. And again, going back to the uh, overall uh, overarching goal of our research, we understand the metastatic tumor and what T cells are either there or not there, but we really don't understand as these tumors start to develop from the normal epithelium of the breast gland, how do they engage the immune response during this process? We now know that these guys at the early stage put up this cytokine, and perhaps that is, again, a danger signal that activates the immune response against them. So we went on to potentiate that signal in the preclinical models, and what we found was quite striking. So when you induce the expression of TSLP, in these animals that are otherwise prone to developing cancer, not only you suppress their tumor development, I'm not showing you that data, but what I'm showing you here is the change in the morphology of the tumor. So you're obviously, in, as you can see here, if you will reprogram in this tumor to undergo a differentiation program again and form dilated breast gland ducts instead of forming a completely formed in situ tumor that you see in the control animals. So what we have been able to demonstrate is that by engagement of CD4 off of this cytokine that we studied in epithelial drive cytokine that we studied, we can really modify the early development of the tumors, both in the skin and internal organs. And uh, going forward, uh, what we are hoping to accomplish in collaboration with industry here is to really ask this question of the role of, if you will, immunoprevention and also the, the pathways that coming out of this type of work, both for the prevention of the primary tumors, prevention of recurrence of the tumors, but also as being the initiating events of immunity potentiating what you see in metastatic cancer is the goal of our work. And I will be happy to take any questions outside. Thank you.